When I was little, I had to get a real woman, a real girl, and we would go to the woods, and I would try and take her top off. For real. story with the show. Really simple. It's just a bunch of funny people. We're all telling true stories. Uh, I'm really excited to have this guy. He's one of the funniest men in America. Mr. Tom Papa, everybody. Let him hear. I have uh, a lot of women in my life. I've always had a lot of women in my life. I was raised with girls. Uh, my mom was a girl. Uh, my grandmother was a girl. I, uh, I married a girl. And uh, now I've made my own girls. I have my own girls that I've made. Yeah, I made them. And uh, <laughs> people always ask me things like, do you think they'll end up working at a, huh? <laughs> and uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, they're little now. All I can go by is their gymnastic moves and they're, they got that covered. They're good with that. <laughs> then it's just gonna come down to desire. How badly do they want it? <laughs> they can make their dreams come true. People always ask me, like, are you worried about them now? Like, are you worried about kids? I can't believe, like, with phones, are you worried that these kids have these phones? And we, I would hate raising children now with these phones. Aren't you terrified of what they're going to do with these phones? No, I'm not worried about them at all. They're gonna handle it. They'll be fine. I'm not worried about what's gonna do to them. I'm worried about what it's doing to me. It's making me into a nosy, boorish douchebag. I am spying on my own creatures. I made these people and I'm spying on them. It's so douchey. It's such an awful way to live. I don't care what they do. Why am I invading and spying on what, you know, I, back off. You care that your son is on boobs.com? Really? Really? Your little guy's in there? Boobs, big boobs, dot ka. Is that really bad? When I was little, I had to get a real woman, a real girl, and we would go to the woods, and I would try and take her top off. For real. Because there was no dot anything, and uh, we would just do it until finally she would take her top off, and she was happy, and I was happy, and our parents didn't know about it. They weren't spying through our shit. They weren't going through my text. They weren't doing any of that. So who cares? Just back off. Let them do what they're gonna do. This is the way I've always wanted to do it. They have tools, it's a tool. They have a tool. This is their tool to get laid. Everyone has a tool in their era. This is their tool. You wanna get laid? You gotta learn to use this tool. <laughs> I needed a car. I needed a goddamn car. I needed to get in a car and drive around and look for women. That was my tool. And I knew that at a young age, and I bought a car two years before I was able to drive. I busted my ass. I went out and bust tables in a shitty little restaurant called The Orchards in a Hilton hotel. I would just put on a green bow tie, and I would walk at four o'clock in the morning down to the school, wait for my friend to pick me up, because he had a car already. And I would just sit there and shiver, and he would come and pick me up, and he was the king. He was the king, but I bided my time, because I knew you're not gonna be the king for long. I might be in a green bow tie now, but I will be king in two goddamn years. <laughs> and I just kept working. I didn't get respect, I got my ass kicked. I was just sitting there with a bow tie. People would just be like, get over here. More water, boy. More rolls, boy. And I would just lick them and put them in the basket. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I may have a green bow tie, but I'm a badass underneath it. And I saved up and I got $1,600, $1,600. And I called my uh, uncle, Uncle Al. He ran a uh, junkyard and uh, we called him Uncle Al, all the kids pal, because he always had weed, always had a lot of weed. 
Yeah, still does, still does. And he's, he's still our pal. And I said, Uncle Al, I got $1,600. He said, I got a car for you. I got a car for you, a used 1982 Toyota Corolla. I said, that sounds great. What color is it? He said, baby shit orange. <laughs> Sold, I'll take it. And I put it in my, in my garage and I couldn't drive it for two years. I just pet it. I would pet it and talk to it and just wait for the day when I was able to go out and find girls. And when I turned 17, it was time to hunt. I would, it was like a hunting dog. I would just give it a scent. I found a scrunchie on the, in the park. Smell it, boy, smell it. Oh, 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 oh. And we'd cruise around. And it worked, we got girls. We got girls in baby shit orange. That was how powerful having a car was. And that's when I met Heidi. I met this beautiful girl. She became my girlfriend. She was gorgeous. She was six feet tall. Six feet tall. No, no, no. It wasn't the big, scary, goonish six feet tall. It wasn't like, hey, Tom, I don't think I can fit in baby shit orange. No, this was like long legs, athletic, gorgeous girl. And we would just, that was it. We just got in baby shit orange. We went everywhere, to the beach, to the mountains, just having sex everywhere we went. We were like sexual athletes, just in between those giant long legs. And my parents didn't know shit about it because they couldn't go through my text because it didn't exist. It didn't exist. I learned everything from her. I learned how, I learned how to please a woman orally from because you're 17, stamina. You, they don't make a drug that could make me that strong right now. They don't, it does not exist. If you're 17, you are like, you're like a lion. You were just so, but you're not good. You're not good. <laughs> It's not gonna last long. It's gonna be like, blah, and just, it's gonna be over. And that's where you learn to please a woman another way. And if you have a man in your life that pleases you orally, it's not because he cares about you. It's because he doesn't last very long. <laughs> he needs different skills. And we never got caught. We never got caught. We just were getting laid for years. I would literally drive my car home for curfew, go to bed, say goodnight to everyone, wait for them to sleep, and around midnight, I'd open my window, I'd go out on the garage roof, I would hang on the gutter, I'd have my little legs down until I felt the, the banister below me, then I'd get on that. All those moves took like a half hour, each one of them. I would just be like, do I hear anything? Do I hear anything? And then drop. And then I'd push baby shit orange into the street, and we would just cruise down, no, and then pop it into gear, wing go up to Heidi's house, park in her bushes, and she lived like way down here and her parents were way up there, and I would just climb in her window and we'd have sex every single night. And Baby Shit Orange just stood there waiting for me. And I would go back and I'd climb back in and every night, I never got caught, never got caught. Until one night, one night, in the middle of these long legs, I'm doing what I was taught to do in an oral manner. <laughs> And the door opened, the door opened, and a light of <laughs> just shone on my 17-year-old white ass. It was her father. It was her father. And this is what he says. Tom, it's time to go home now. <laughs> that was it. And close the door. And close the door. I was freaked out. I'm like, what do I do? Do I just put my clothes on and go out the front door? He knows I'm here. <laughs> Do I have to climb out the window? I think I'm, I, I, I'll go out the window. He's probably, he's, he acted so cool. I'm like, he probably has an ax in the hallway. <laughs> Let me just go out the window. So I went out the window and I love this girl. She was my girlfriend. So I had to come back the next day and confront the father and apologize because I loved her. I wanted to be with her. And I actually got in my car, it was a Sunday. And I drove up to her house to apologize to the father of this girl. I, I had such stronger character at 17 than I have right now. If that happened right now, I'd never see this girl again. I would just get in baby shit orange and just go, leave to another state. But I was like, no, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna sit down, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna apologize. And I remember he was watching tennis. He was watching tennis. He didn't even look up. I was like, I mean, I'm really, really sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to be in here. I was, no, it was late. I, should, I shouldn't have been in here. I have a voice all cracking. I didn't say exactly what I was doing because I didn't know what he saw. I don't want to be like, I really didn't, shouldn't have been going down on her, but I don't last that long. 
So I just went with the, it's late. I was just, it was really late. And this is what he says. He goes, whoa, you kids. And kept watching tennis. I was like, this is the greatest man alive. Forget Gandhi, this guy is at peace. This guy is centered. This guy is just one with the universe. I'm like, I'm gonna be this guy. When I get older, this is the father that I am going to be. I'm gonna be so chill and so zen. I'm gonna be exactly like this guy because he didn't kill me. And I'm gonna be this guy. And uh, I fast forward, I've made my own people. I've made my own people. I have a daughter and my Woo! wife just tells me, thank you. And my wife tells me, just sitting there chopping vegetables, she just lets it be known, just kind of out of the side of her mouth, just, just like it's nothing. You know, there's a boy texting your daughter. Woo! Woo! That would have been the Zen response. <laughs> Woo! But I didn't. I just yelled out, get me her fucking phone. <laughs> No Zen, no nothing. I don't even use, I don't curse a lot in my life ever. And now in front of my little daughter and cats and everybody else, I just blurt out in my own kitchen, get me her fucking phone. And this is how awful, this is why I feel so nosy and shitty. I get her phone and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna, yeah, let's see what this is about. Where is it? I know her code. I can use this. Ah, oh, here he is. Here he is, the little shit bird. Let's see what he's doing with our daughter. First text is like, what are you gonna be for Halloween? I'm thinking of Batman, ha, ha, ha. She's like, oh, I might be Snow White, LOL, rainbow, rainbow, unicorn. <laughs> What's your favorite candy? Kit Kat bars, me too, pizza, pizza. Little thing dancing, I can't wait for the parade, me neither. Hank, 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 hearts, 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 smiley face. Eh. What a piece of shit I am. A total piece of shit. So I'm off. I'm not gonna uh, go through her phone anymore. I will take a drill and bolt her window shut. <laughs> but I'm gonna stay off her phone. Thank you guys so much.